Welcome to Living the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want us to concentrate this morning because I'm about to share something that will help you to accomplish all that God had desired for you this year and in the years ahead. I wouldn't say it's a secret, but I've come to terms with what I'm going to share with you because it's been working for me. Is that okay? In the year 2020, You will meet with distractions, both unnecessary and planned distractions. If only you will hearken diligently to the voice of his command and put into practice some of the things that I will share with you this morning, then you will be able to surmount the plot of the enemy. His plan for the children of God this year is to distract them any way he can. So we must have to put some things in place to enable us to deal with him squarely. There are things that we must resolve in our hearts The first thing is always seek God's perspective about any situation that you find yourself in. And know the love of God for you is steadfast, final, and everlasting. When you realize that his love for you is steadfast, final, and everlasting, then you will know that he will never forget you. You need to come to terms with those facts, that his love for you is steadfast. They are new every morning. His faithfulness is from generation to generation. His love is everlasting, is eternal. When you come to terms with those facts, then you will realize that he will never forget about you. To the extent that all the hairs in your head had been counted, not one of them will fall off without him noticing it. He says in Psalm 37 that I delight in every detail of your life. Every. For somebody to number the hairs on your head tells you to what extent he is interested in what happens to you. So for us to succeed in the year 2020 and beyond, we must always seek God's perspective in every situation that confronts us. Is that okay? And how do we do that? When you go to Psalm 1, verse 1, and 2, and 3, it gives us an idea what God expects us to do, what it means to see things from God's point of view. In Psalm 1, 
verse 1, it says, Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with scoffers. What is he talking about? He's talking about association. Because evil association will corrupt good character. Your association to a very great extent will determine what happens to you in life. Your association to a great extent will determine what you believe. Your association contributes to what you hear, and what you hear determines what you think, and what you think determines how you feel, and how you feel determines how you act. So association is very, very important. You cannot afford in the new year and in the years ahead to associate anyhow. And God had given us three dimensions of people that were not supposed to associate with. It means people we are not supposed to hold fellowship with. You can minister to them, but you are not supposed to do what? Fellowship with them. The first group is the wicked. When you hear the word wicked, what comes to your mind? It means morally very bad. It means someone that is sinful, someone that is evil, someone that is against every known will of God, that does what is contrary to the will of God, not because he's ignorant, simply because he is wicked, he is evil. He doesn't want to associate with God or the things of God. The second category of people are sinners. Those are wrongdoers. They make it a habit of doing the wrong things, even when they know otherwise. The third category of people that God warns us against associating with are the scoffers, those that belittle, those that make fun, those that laugh at the things of God, those that ridicule the things of God, those that mock the things of God, those that make light the things of God, those that make a fool jesting and teasing the things of God. They are scoffers. And God said, don't associate with such people. Why? Because when you do, they will rob you of your joy. And you remember that joy produces strength. And without strength, you will not be able to accomplish anything that is meaningful in life. So what the enemy does is to get you into an arrangement, into fellowship with these categories of people. And they will rob you of your joy, thereby robbing you of your strength, causing you not to be an achiever in life. But in that same psalm, 
It talks about those that delight in doing everything that the Lord wants. To delight simply means great satisfaction, great pleasure. Those that want to do that that is pleasing to the Father. So you can only see things from God's perspective when you begin to delight in Him. When you take pleasure in doing those things that are pleasing to Him. And what are the things that you should delight yourself in? Because to delight means something that makes you very happy. What are those things that as a child of God you ought to delight yourself in? So that God in turn will order your step. What are the things? If you go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we have an insight as to the things that God expects us to delight ourselves in. The first is to love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And also to love God one another. So what it means that in this new year you must resolve to see things from the perspective of love. Always measure whatever situation that you find yourself, see it from the eyes of love. God expects us in this new year to delight ourselves in living in peace and joy with one another. Anything that you know that will deprive you of your peace, shy away from it. Anything that will steal your joy, run away from it. But delight in those things, take great pleasure in putting joy and peace into the lives of those that are around you. Try as much as you can, if it's within your power, to make them happy. Put a smile in the face of someone. Try as much as possible to live in peace with the people around you. And that is why we are admonished to seek peace and pursue it. Because peace is that glue that binds up relationship. And of course, the absence of peace breeds disharmony, conflict. And where there is conflict, every evil work abounds. So in the new year, we must delight ourselves in walking in joy and peace. Remember, the psalmist said, not just shunning the presence of wicked people, sinners, and scoffers. That's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is what you now have to do for you to be able to accomplish all that God desires for you in the new year. Then, 
You must delight yourself in being patient with others. You must delight yourself in being patient with others. You must delight yourself in being kind and good to others, especially the needy amongst us, the poor. Be kind to them. Be good to them. See their needs and meet those needs as much as you can. I'm talking about what will make us succeed in the year 2020 and beyond. Seeing things from God's perspective. Whatever situation that you find yourself, ask yourself, what would Christ have done if he were to be in this particular situation? Delight yourself in being faithful in everything that you do. Faithfulness is the key that unlocks God's favor before him and before man. That is why he said, who can find a faithful worker for you to succeed in anything, in any endeavor in life, you must cultivate the seed of faithfulness. People must see you to be trustworthy. In little things, some of us were waiting until a big responsibility is given to us for us to become responsible and trustworthy. But God says, I want to see how you handle the little things that I have put you in charge. He says, if you don't take care of what belongs to someone else, what makes you think that I will give you that that belongs to you? Faithfulness is the only thing that will attract God's goodness towards your life. He gives you an opportunity with someone else's asset watching to see how you handle it. When you misuse it, when you treat it nonchalantly, that that belongs to you will not be given to you because you have filled the test that was set before you. So every assignment, every responsibility is a test from God. When you pass it, you get promoted until you get to the point that God deems you responsible enough to give you that that belongs to you. What it simply means is that when you refuse or deliberately refuse to take care of what belongs to somebody else, that you have the opportunity of taking care of, or you have the responsibility of taking care of, that that belongs to you, you will never get it from the Lord, except the ones you get out of manipulation. And for such things, they don't last. So any lasting gift comes through faithfulness, if that gift must come from God. Delight to be gentle with one another especially the weak, of course the poor, those that you are stronger than, those that are below you, 
Treat them with gentleness. Bring your strength under control. That's what gentleness is all about. God expects us to be gentle with one another. We are talking about the things that we need to delight ourselves in in this new year. The things that we should preoccupy our minds with. The things that we should begin to cultivate our lives around so that we will be able to accomplish that that God has set out before us this new year. Delight in leading a disciplined life with self-control. Lack of self-control have cost many their lives. Even God's great desire for them. Solomon missed it because of lack of self-control. David nearly lost the kingdom because of lack of self-control. Samson, you know this story, lost his life because of self-control, and so many other people. Even Moses could not enter the promised land because he could not control his temper. So lack of self-control could cost you your destiny. So we need to cultivate that seed. And in the days ahead and weeks ahead, we're going to learn how to cultivate and nurture these seeds that I've been mentioning. As we delight, God will fulfill what he has promised us in Psalm 37, verse 4. The desires of your heart will be met through what you delight in, through what you take great pleasure in doing. And I've mentioned nine of them. Loving God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength, and loving one another. Living in joy and peace with one another. Being kind and good to others. Being faithful in your calling and in all that God had entrusted into your hands. Being gentle to the less privileged, to the weak, bringing your strength under control and not lording it over others, just because you think that you're in a position to do it. We're experiencing that in our country. Now, but I can assure you that the word of God will always come true. He said the rod of the wicked will never rest upon the lot of the righteous. He said, I've heard the groanings of my children, and I'm coming speedily to deliver them just like they have expected me to do. In this year, 2020, all the oppressors, if they don't change their ways, God will take them out of the way. Either through incurable sickness or death itself. God expects his children to delight in self-discipline. When we do all that, he said, I will give you the desires of your heart. 
That means you're desiring the right things. Living in peace with others. Loving others. Being kind to others. You see, too many times we pray and fast for the anointing of God. That anointing will never come if there is no love in your heart. Because God wants you to be compassionate. That is what love is all about. Without a heart of compassion, God will never release his power for you to be able to do anything. And we need that power like never before in this new year. It says your steps will be directed by the Lord. Because God himself delights in every detail of your life. That's Psalm 37, verses 4 and 23. So in this new year and the years ahead, it's up to us to decide the kind of life we want to lead. But I've made up my mind that whatever situation or circumstance that I find myself that I'm going to view it from God's perspective. That means that I'm going to put the spectacle of love, joy, and peace. If whatever I want to do will not bring joy, it will not bring peace to the person that I'm dealing with, then I will shy away from it. That's the meaning. If whatever... I'm doing when all minister grace, kindness, and goodness to the person that I'm dealing with, then I will shy away from it. I've resolved to be faithful in every assignment that God had given to me, to put in my best in terms of my time, my energy, take the necessary risk, and of course, put in all the resources that is needed to be able to accomplish that that God had commended unto my hands. And of course, I've made up my mind also in the new year to be patient, knowing that no one is perfect. When you realize that part of Love is to be patient. Impatience is a sign of unloving. When you love someone, you've got to be patient with the person. Okay? But that does not mean that you shy away from correcting people's stupidity. When you see a child crawl into a candle, you don't stay there and say, oh, because of love, let him go out and experience the burning of the candle. You need to spank the child. After you must have taken him away or have from that candle one, two times, the third time you spank. Okay? So are we ready to face the issues of the year? 2020. Are you encouraged this morning? Now you know what to do. You know the things not to do, the associations not to keep, knowing fully well that such associations will rob you of what God has in stock for you. And of course, keeping away from such association is just one side of the coin. There are the things that God expects us to put in place. And those things I've mentioned as listed in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Can we all stand? Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gurkey Abuja. 
God bless you.